Well, shoot fly, don't bother me. Welcome back, you guys, and we are doing something so fun. All the way back from the 1880s in Pennsylvania Dutch, this recipe comes to us once again, shoe fly pie. And it got its name because it was so sweet and so luscious that when people made it and set it out to cool, they would have to shoo the flies away because the flies wanted to take part in the deliciousness as well. So, happy fall and happy fun and happy gatherings to all. And we're gonna make this for the first time, you guys. I remember hearing about this when I was a tiny kid, but I don't think I ever had it. I think I just heard about it. Okay, so we are gonna start with our topping, which is actually going to be the topping and part of the filling. And we have our flour here, our coconut sugar, and a tablespoon of butter. And guys, don't forget, let me stir this together right quick before I plop my butter in. And look at this, we've got out our little pastry blender that we don't use very much anymore, do we? But we're going to use it today. All right. Now we're going to blend this butter into the flour and coconut sugar until it's just really good and incorporated. It's not going to take a lot of blending. I don't know if you guys are like me. It just seems like the more stressful life gets and the more stressful the world around us gets, the more I enjoy doing things like this. Just kind of the old hands-on method. It's somehow oddly calming and therapeutic. And guys, don't forget that the recipe will be, at, you know, in the description for you. Look at that, you guys. Look at those beautiful little, the tiniest little crumbs of butter is all that you can see. It's blended in there so beautifully with that pastry blender. Isn't that cool? Now we're going to set that aside and we're going to make our filling. So into our bowl, we're going to have one room temperature egg. Baking soda. Molasses, one cup. And the recipe called for a light molasses, which is really cool because I have some of this beautiful very light sorghum molasses that I get from the mountains right up on the in the Blue Ridge Parkway you guys you go up there some of those beautiful fruit stands or produce stands and get you some of this stuff I'm sure you can or, order it off of Amazon or wherever as well and you can get light molasses in the store too what you're going to look for is something that says light flavored molasses. Okay, easy to find. Okay, so basically I'm whipping that egg into the molasses with the soda. And look what that's look what's happening there, you guys. Look at that beautiful emulsification that we're getting there. And the baking soda is interacting with the molasses and it's just absolutely bringing air and expansion into that mixture. Now, we're going to add our boiling water. Let me just double check this recipe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Got to make sure I'm doing everything right. You can see, a little too much. That's why whenever you're measuring liquid ingredients, guys, and I know I've showed you this before, but I learned this, believe it or not, I learned this back at home economics in seventh grade, you guys. You always set it on a, on a hard surface on your countertop and then get down level with it and check to make sure that your liquid ingredients are correct. Okay, now the recipe says that we add half of the topping mixture into this. So, 
We're going to eyeball this in, half of our mixture. Now, if we do want to be really super precise on things like that, when it matters, just measure what you've got. And after you've measured it, divide it by half. And I hear the beep from our 400 degree oven that is preheated. That was perfect timing, wasn't it? Now, we've got here an unbaked pie shell, okay, unbaked. And if you want to shortcut things, you know you can do the semi-homemade thing and do the store-bought, which you get in the freezer, it's already in the pie shell for you. You can do that as well. But I really enjoy making pie crust from scratch. To me, it's just so much fun. It's so much beautiful flavor. And that way you can use whatever ingredients making your pastry crust that you want to use. This one happens to be an all-butter pastry crust. And for that recipe, guys, just check out my recipe on cherry pie. I'm going to show you how to make that pastry crust from scratch. And I'm going to show you how easy it is, okay? Okay, guys, our filling is going to go in. Okay guys, this pot is so full that I really think we need to just go that extra, take that extra little moment and put this on a, just in case it starts bubbling at all, which I don't think it will, but like I said, not made this recipe before, so. Not super sure what it's going to do. Well, my goodness sakes, I think that just about came out perfectly as far as the topping. I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not. It just seems right to me, so I'm, I'm going with it. Guys, this goes into a 400 degree oven for only 10 minutes. And then that temperature is reduced to 350 for 20 to 30 or till done. And I'm going to show you about that because whenever you're working with a custard type or style pie, um, you don't cook it until it's super, super firm. So make sure you stay till the end of the video to see and let me show you how to gauge that. Okay guys, our shoe fly pie has been sitting on the cooling rack for quite a while now and it is almost completely cool. It's just a tingest bit warm on the bottom, but I want to cut it. Oh, so excited to see how this tastes. So we're just going to go ahead in through the middle and we've got a beautiful little bit of a crust, not just the crumbly topping, but as you cut through, guys, it has this beautiful kind of sugary-like crust that you can feel the knife going through. Slip this right underneath the bed here. Wouldn't it be nice if the edge does not break? Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, look at that, you guys. Ooh, that almost looks like the inside of a pecan pie, doesn't it? Lovely, which I love homemade pecan pies. If you guys want to see a homemade pecan pie on this channel, make sure you leave me a comment on that because one of my daughters has a fabulous recipe and we beg her to make it every Thanksgiving and Christmas. Time for the big reveal. Oh, wow, that is good. Very interesting. The molasses is forward, but not like so much in your face, right? And then you get the buttery flavor coming through on that. That is, and it's it's sweet, but it's not like kill you sweet. You know what I mean? 
And also with that molasses and buttery flavor in there and that texture of that beautiful pie crust, it's perfect for fall weather. So you guys got to give this a try and let me know how it worked out for you and if you made any changes and if you added that to yours, oh my word, please let me know because I really want to try that now and I want to know how that would turn out. And as always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that really helps us out. We're loving so much bringing you guys all these fall ideas and things that will help you out in your kitchen with your family all the time. So we'll see you next time on Things Tina Does.